Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie from ObsidianDawn.com. I've been a digital painter for many years now and mostly use Photoshop to make those paintings. Uh, my painting is actually what got me started making Photoshop brushes in the first place when I couldn't find the kind of brushes that I was looking for. So I started making my own. Over the years, I've learned a lot about Photoshop's features. This one that I'm going to share with you today, uh, painting skin texture, is one of the most important things that I learned when it came to painting portraits and people's skin. So I thought I'd share it with you guys, along with some brushes to do it yourself. Uh, for those of you watching this on YouTube, you can follow the link in the description to my website where you can find and download all the brushes that I use and talk about here for free. Uh, feel free to play around with them, but if you ever use them, all that I ask for is that you either credit me alongside wherever you use them or purchase a license for them for only $3. And you can read all about this, my terms of use, licensing, etc. on my website. Skin can be pretty tough to paint. Uh, this is how I used to do it. I'd start out with my basic colors blocked in, like you see here. Then using the smudge tool, I would use one of the basic round brushes and just blend the colors together, much like this. But as you can see here, uh, in the early stages it looks pretty, well, <laughs> smudgy which is of course just what the smudge tool is made for, but it doesn't work very well for skin. I start out with about 25% strength on the smudge tool and just start blending the colors together. Then I would lower the strength to say 15% or so and smudge some more, then 8% and smudge some more. In the end, all the colors get pretty well blended, but everything looks so smooth, and that's not what skin looks like. Skin has all kinds of imperfections, pores, sometimes freckles, etc., etc. We want something that's both more efficient for blending those colors together and something that will give us a bit more texture to it when it's done. So that's what these brushes are for. Now this time I'm starting back again with the same basic colors blocked in just like before, but instead of using a round smudge tool for blending, I'm using one of the blending brushes in my Skin Textures brush pack. This brush is called Blending One. Uh, you can immediately see the difference on how well the colors are being blended together, as well as creating a bit of texture for that skin. I start out with a medium-sized brush for the bigger areas. The strength is somewhere around 25-30%, but then I'll switch to a smaller size brush when it comes to the edges. Sometimes I'll uh, lower that strength as well to about 15% mm, or so, maybe 10. Uh, the way that these blend can create a bit of a mess at the edges of the skin if you're not careful. So that's why I select a smaller size brush or lower the blending strength uh, for the more precise areas. It's always a good idea. And I don't just have brushes in this pack for blending, like I'm showing you here. I'll show you now how you can paint with them as well. I've sped up the time on this part so that you can get an idea for how I use them to start painting a face. I start out, as you can see, with just a base color, the medium tones of my skin. Then I'll go and take one of those painting brushes, in this case it's painting one, and put it at a transparency of about 40% or so, and then go and start adding shadows and highlights on top of it. I've already painted the eyes, hair, eyebrows, and mouth in this case, since that's not what we're covering in this tutorial. I don't usually start with those done, like you see here, but you can do whatever works for you. I've got the skin on its own layer so that I can blend it without worrying about messing up all those other things that I've already painted, and they're all on their own layers. Uh, by having the skin on its own layer, you can also do something that makes this easier, a trick that I didn't use here, but should have. If you open up your layers window and look at your skin layer, assuming that the skin is all you have on that layer, what you want to do is hold down the control or command button if you're on a Mac, and then left click on the tiny thumbnail on the left side of that skin layer. This will select just the skin portion of the image only and keep you from painting outside of that area as you go around and add these shadows and highlights. It'll keep you inside the lines, in other words. Uh, one of the things I find very handy also is to have a color palette for painting, which I make before I even get started. And that's what you see over there on the right of the image. It's got all the shadows, highlights, colors that I'm going to use already laid out so that I can just use my eyedropper tool and grab them whenever I want. It keeps the colors on your face uh, fairly consistent so that you don't have strange different colored highlights and shadows because you changed your color at some point for something and then can't find it again. Now you could do this, paint the entire face, without using the blending brushes at all. 
just using the painting brushes and playing around with the brushes at a low transparency, blending the colors together slowly. Uh, if you prefer to paint this way, these brushes work for that as well. I, however, love the look of the skin, the texture that's created by using these blending brushes. So that's one reason you see me starting out with the basic colors blocked out and then blending. I'll then go back in and do much more painting than blending when it comes to details. I'll use the basic round brushes more and more when it comes to details as well. You just can't get the level of precision that you need um, for some things with the brushes in this pack. They weren't made for painting details, they were made for painting skin texture. So when it comes to the details of a nose, the crease of an eyelid, those things uh, you'll want to use a basic round brush for more often than not. And now I've got quite a bit more detail to the nose done and uh, I'm just refining the colors and adding detail to the rest of the face. Uh, right here I'm using the scattered single brush, uh, which is pretty close to a basic round brush uh, to add some of the details. It adds a little bit of randomness to it and it's just a fun brush to use. I'll, I'll show you more of how I use that in just a little bit. But as far as the basic shape of the face goes, I just keep painting and blending, painting and blending until it starts looking how I want. And as you get more and more detailed, you'll want to keep the strength of the smudge tool uh, fairly low to keep from blending away all those detail colors into oblivion. Smaller brushes will also help you have more control as well as that lower strength percentage. Uh, now I'm using that same brush again, Scattered Single, for highlights. It's great for adding splashes of highlights like you see me doing here once you get down to the close details. Those highlights can really do a great job of bringing people's attention to certain areas of the painting, like around the eyes, like I'm doing here, or the tip of the nose, which usually has a bit of a shine to it as well. I'll use that Scattered Single brush and then sometimes blend it in a bit with one of the blending brushes and the smudge tool. Now, this scattered single brush is basically a simple round brush, but with a bit of scattering and randomness applied to it, which is, like I said, great for adding splashes of highlights or color. And now I'm going to teach you how to use two more types of brushes in the brush pack. They both help to add a lot more detail to your skin, which helps add to the realism. Pores and freckles. I have two brushes for each of them in the pack. Now we'll start out with pores. I'm using, I believe, the Pores 1 brush here. The color that I have selected is the same color that I used as a base color for my skin, something mid-range between the highlights and shadows. The opacity of the brush is set to about 40%. I am painting these pores on their own layer so that I can go back and play around the, with the transparency of that layer afterward to either show the pores more or less depending upon what I decide looks best. Now this brush will randomly place pores and scatter them about automatically, so just paint it over the skin and swipes wherever you'd like the pores to be visible. Now in this case I've not only painted pores in that mid-range color but also in a lighter color, a color that's about the same as some of my highlights. Pores will show up as either lighter or darker depending upon how the light hits them, uh, as will tiny imperfections in the skin, which is why I'm doing this in both colors. Sometimes I'll stick to just the mid-range color for pores, and sometimes I'll add in some of these highlight colors as well. With women's faces, I actually tend to use the lighter color more often because it can add almost a mystical, shimmery quality to the skin. And this luminescent quality is something that you're much more likely to want in women's faces than in men's. You'll also see that I'm going back over with the eraser tool and the painting one brush to randomly erase some of the pores. I'm doing this to make their placement even more random and to get rid of the pores um, in any places that I don't want them to show up. And now for freckles. Now before I get started painting freckles, I want to use the same trick that I explained before earlier, the selection trick, to keep the freckles within the confines of the face itself. Holding control or command if you're on a Mac, left click on the tiny thumbnail on the left side of that skin layer in your layers palette this selects just the area where there's skin and will keep your freckles just on the face when you paint them. Now the color I have selected is a medium to dark brown and pretty saturated. In other words, when you're choosing it from the color palette, more over to the right than to the left. More color to it, less grayness. I'm using the Freckles 2 brush to paint these, uh, again on their own layer. I'm painting with the opacity of this brush set fairly high, probably 100%, so that you can see what I'm doing better. And you may want to do that too, since you can always just go play with the transparency of the freckles layer afterward. So then I'll just go in and start painting, mostly around the nose, forehead, and cheeks, since that's where most people tend to have more freckles. 
I'm doing this in small little swipes so that I can control better where the freckles go, but you could easily just paint randomly around the face and the brush would do its job well. It scatters the freckles about automatically, just like the pores brush did with the pores. Uh, again, just like I did uh, with the pores, I'm going to take the eraser tool and the painting one brush to go back in and randomly erase some of the freckles so that they're even more random than before. More freckles in some places, less in others. Then I set the opacity of the freckles layer to about 15 to 25 percent, depending upon what looks best to you, and also depending upon the opacity of your freckles brush to begin with. Now these little details, pores, highlights, freckles, can really add a lot to your painting to help make it look more realistic. It can be somewhat difficult to see in a YouTube video like this, so I'm going to do some zooming in and show you the differences in the face with and without the pores and freckles so that you can see just how much realism they add to this woman's skin. Now that was without and with on the full face, then I zoomed in, and now I'm going to zoom in even further and show you both without freckles and with. And that covers most of the brushes in this set. Obviously, there's a lot more I could teach you about painting a face, how to choose colors, more about painting the details, etc., etc., but that's not what this tutorial is about. This is just meant to explain how to use this brush set to achieve a higher level of realism to your skin textures. Also, some of you have probably noticed some errors in this painting that could use some cleaning up. I may go back and finish this one one day, but this painting was done quickly within like an hour or two, just for the purposes of this tutorial. That about covers it. I hope that this has helped you in some way. And if you have any further questions, please leave me a comment for me on my website. I may or may not check the comments posted here on YouTube. Uh, your best chance to get a hold of me is on my website by following the link in the description. Thank you very much and enjoy.